Well, ever since I、um, learned about Feynman's, you know, electricity in the atmosphere from Feynman's lectures, the notion that,、uh, as you can see here on the diagram, that、uh, if you know, the surface of the ground, if we take that as our reference point for voltage. Then roughly every one meter above that reference point into the atmosphere, we go positive 100 volt. So as you can see here on the left, one meter above plus 100, two meters plus 200, three meters plus 300, and so on. But of course, that's just the voltage, and it, there's very little current. And as you can see, the notion is that when a human stands on the ground, for example. He's not. He or she is, or they are not getting zapped because somehow the ground. They're becoming like part of the ground, carrying that ground potential up, and this potential of they say the hundred volts, one meter above ground, is now going over their head, but not quite maybe a meter over their head like it was the ground. Now,、um, of course, this varies a lot. Um, but the notion is, of course, so the the ground is relatively negative, and the upper atmosphere, as we as we go up in the meters above the ground, is going more positive. And so you can imagine the electric field lines from the negative to positive would be roughly vertical. Now、um, you can see that、uh, there's also very little current.、Um, because we do have a a, a current flowing. Down, a positive charge flowing down. You could argue a negative charge flowing up. So that's current.、Um, but、uh, one of my thoughts here is that, well, of course, when the、um, voltage increases and it breaches the breakdown voltage of the air, then of course we do get significant current. <laughs> okay, <laughs> with lightning strikes. <clears throat> so. My thoughts are, for example, we've got this、uh, potential, but with very little current going on. And you know, some people do or have, well, many people have、um, experimented with this, where they fly a drone way up into the air with a wire that's coming down to towards ground, and they can use、um, uh, basically at the very top of the wire to increase because the the wire is carrying that ground potential up. Uh, at the very top, they might use,、um, let's see, a、uh, a point, and as you can see, then it,、uh, like you might have experimented with plasma before, if it gets to a point, then the plasma stream will, will is more likely to come off that end, as you can see, because of the concentration of the、uh, field lines. Now, in those experiments, they they can draw enough energy to power one of these electrostatic motors. But that's really not much, is it? <laughs> okay. Now, so my thoughts are: if you imagine, for example, just a strange analogy. It's not really electronics, but imagine we had a flat piece of wood, like a board or something, and we just sprinkle some sand across that board. Okay, and the sand's just sitting there. Now. Imagine we lift the left side of the board, so we now have the board tilted. We've lifted it gently, but the sand has not started slipping down to the right. If we increase the potential by lifting the left side of the board up higher and higher, eventually it will overcome the friction that the sand has on the surface of the board, and the sand will start to slide down to the right. Now let's just reverse a little. Back to the sand being sprinkled on the board, and we lift the left of the board, but not quite high enough for the sand to overcome that friction and start sliding down to the right. But there's the potential there, but it's not moving. Rather than rising the left of the board higher, what we can do is vibrate the board, and that unlocks that potential. And the sand starts to slide down to the right. So <clears throat> I've been pondering and pondering for a long time, really, and、uh, I have a concept. So here we go. 
we have the ground relatively negatively charged. I've drawn little arrows to depict what the field lines would normally be going up to the opposites, which is the positive. Now, and they've got their lines showing the field lines down to the negative, which would be roughly the case. Of course, it's all over the place. But um, that would be normal. Now, um, if you're familiar with the CW voltage multiplier, or the Cockroft-Walton voltage multiplier, like one of these uh, circuits, just one sec, I will quickly um, pull back in, and I'll go to a, a typical circuit of that. Now, as you can see with a CW voltage multiplier, normally you have your um, AC source, let's say there on the left. Now, of course, that's differential, and so we have two connections. We, you know, the uh, 180 degrees out apart. One of them is, is grounded. All right. Um, now, this charges these capacitors, and if you look at the um, the run along the bottom, for example, um, end to end, they will end up with higher voltage, and you can add more stages to this. So, but it's a higher DC voltage. The initial signal or pulse. Um, will carry through let's say if this is unbalanced and like this one this particular diagram the top one is swinging and the bottom one is fixed now the top rail where c1 and c3 is will still carry that signal even no matter how many stages we add that signal will travel along the top rail but the bottom rail will be our sort of rectified somewhat stable dc side but either way, whether we have the signal, the line carrying the signal at the top or not at the bottom, um, the potential at further along to the right versus the left increases with more stages. Okay. Now, I've done many experiments with that type of circuit, and I can quite successfully uh, feed a CW multiplier with a single wire, not needing uh, two poles for the AC. And um, <clears throat> and and more efficiently though, uh, when you bring the system to resonance. Now this little symbol is one that I've made up. Uh, that just represents one of my magnetically tunable inductors. Okay. Now, how that works? <clears throat> Whenever there's a transient, basically changing values traversing anywhere through the system, <clears throat> the diodes make the determinations. And will, however much per cycle or cycles, it could be more than one signal going through this, will eventually charge these capacitors. And of course, from end to end, just like a string of batteries all in series, we end up with a higher voltage potential. More stages, even more so, okay? Now, of course, <clears throat> um, even when you think of antennas, for example, if you look at uh, a half-wave dipole, at the very ends of the antenna is your highest voltage, and at the middle in that situation is, is your highest current. Now, so of course, from here to here, we've got high voltage potential. Now, just ignore this for, for now. We have another one here. Same thing, with a high voltage potential across them. Also, a magnetically tunable inductor to ground. Now, the direction I've depicted here see from this uh, element that will be like the uh, receiving element we have the direction of current flow down 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 okay so this being having positive charges coming this way which is current then this will become the negative okay and this will be extremely positive with reference to this okay now notice the ground is negative and the atmosphere is positive. So my idea is, of course, you probably figured this out. In order to give a conduit for these charges to more readily come down, I want to funnel them. To do that, I need to direct those field lines that were pointing down to something more attractive than this weak negative field down here. To do that, 
I make this extremely negative because I'm shifting the voltage positive and negative here. This is going more and more negative. So these field lines will start to, from around the, the local area, attract towards this point. So now we have direction. And of course, the inverse, same thing down here. This becomes much more, oops, sorry about that. Um, this becomes much more positive. So it attracts all the negative lines towards it in direction. I'm just talking about direction of electric field lines at the moment. Everything's tethered, all right? So when we have electrical impulses, changes, transients, or moving charges, currents, they will follow those lines. So I may be able to, for, or I may have to, for example, excite the system externally. So it could be a rectenna system, but it may also be uh, quite functional just with the passive background radiation and also just these charges. But some sort of excitation will actually help get this all moving. So I've caused the direction and then, and the high potential. And we should be able to then actually start to utilize that pressure um, and get currents moving. And halfway along between the two highest voltage to potential different points is where I will apply the load. So I think that this will actually work. Now, as for just how efficiently, I don't know. But I'm dead set certain that it will wipe the floor with a long skinny wire and a, a pointed tip held up in the air by a drone powering an iron motor. This will do better than that, but it will may also act uh, as a good rectenna system. So um, let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, hopefully I covered that all properly. <laughs> 7-3 and thanks for watching.